just came in for Inktober. If you are not aware of what these are, these are Pintel art brushes. And I've had a red one for a couple years and I loved it. And then I flew to AX and it just exploded all over my pencil case. So maybe don't fly with these. Today we're gonna unbox a bunch of them and we're also gonna swatch them on watercolor paper. Now I really like using these for limited color illustrations and I'll go grab a couple examples. So I've used the red in the past for cute pieces like this. And I really love how it plays on watercolor paper. So this is a Strathmore visual journal. You can also use it for something a little more immediate. Again, Strathmore visual journal. And I have some kid lit art. And that was actually done with fountain pen ink, but can be used like that as well. So today I am going to take a look at these and they've been on the market for a really long time. When I was in undergrad, like almost 10 years ago, they were in the market. So they have color number on the barrel, but the packaging is Japanese. And I got these through Amazon and the little box around the UPC also indicates the color. So I've got a lot of work to do to get these all unwrapped. All right, so after a lot of work, I have unboxed all 18 colors and we have a pretty good variety of colors here. So the next step is there is a little plastic ring on the inside and I'll show you guys with one and then I'll do the rest off camera. So as you can see, it hasn't been started yet. There's a little red plastic ring right here. We remove the ring we, yeah, because it's a Japanese product, we have to screw it righty loosey, lefty tighty. Um, and then you squeeze the barrel to get the ink going. And I recommend you inverting that, well, that you invert the pens. And this isn't a full review because I've tried these products before and I really like them. Um, I've had a lot of experience with the red. And since on Amazon, it is to get the colors I wanted, it was cheaper just to get the 18 color set. So I'm gonna go ahead and de-ring all 17 of these. You can see that I have all of my brush pins inverted. That's to get the ink to the brush itself. We'll take one of the early ones. You can see it sort of helps get things started. Um, and I, whoo, it's gonna domino all of those over. Um, I am going to leave them like this for a little while. That way I'm not like, oh, nope, some of them are ready. Well, okay then. So we'll zoom back on in and I'm just gonna do swatches for you guys and then I'll blend it out with some water just to show you. Some of them um, will stay pretty solidly one color. Some of them are going to change color when you add water because these are dye based, very similar to the mermaid markers I've already reviewed on this channel and I have those handy so we can take a moment and check out the differences. These hold a lot of ink and they're actually refillable. This whole cartridge on the back can be replaced. So you don't actually have to buy a whole nother set if they dry out. Now, supposedly the mermaid markers are also refillable, but I haven't seen refills available for them. So I take that with a grain of salt. And if you need to expel more ink, you just give the body a squeeze. Don't want to squeeze too hard because, oopsie, because it'll really come pouring out. That turquoise is a really nice color. And they also sell a pigment black, which would be waterproof. The black that comes with this set is dye based, so it is not. There we go. Now they all domino over. I was waiting when that was, for that to happen. And that sort of dry brush effect is actually something I'm really excited about with these. It's one of the reasons I 
really enjoyed using the red. The only colors I'm not super excited about are the browns, and that is because with dye-based media, browns tend to separate out. They even include a peach color, which is a little saturated for my taste. My yellow is still being stubborn. Save that one for last. And the brushes used on these are very similar to most water-based water water -based dye markers or um, water brushes. And I even have a video showing you guys how if you already have your water brushes handy and your fountain pen enthusiast, you can make something somewhat similar with fountain pen inks. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a chance to dry. So I went ahead and I labeled everything. I'm gonna move this aside. Now one of the problems with using these Pentel um, brush pins, uh, dye-based brush pins on watercolor paper is they tend to stay wet for a while. So what I normally do when I do those little solid color illustrations is I will do my, um, my colored line art and then I'll do my ink and then I'll let it dry overnight. So I'm gonna just set that aside. And I've got my mermaid markers from that other review. And we can just quickly compare them. So these have been used a little, but not too, too much. And as you can see, they're roughly the same size as the Pentel. Both dye-based markers or dye-based brush pens. They both utilize a water brush sort of system. In fact, I have a cheap Recollections water brush. This is actually a chisel tip, but you guys can see that really the only difference is colored ink inside the barrel. And I'm just going to grab one of my fountain pen ink ones. This was done with a uh, blue Pervenche. And oh, it does have a tendency to leak, even though I did seal the threads with silicon grease. So I do store them standing up. So if you have that sort of material handy, you could make your own if you so desire. Although, like I said, they're very prone to leaking and they would not be good for travel. Let me quickly recap these and I will go ahead and clean my hands off. So this is made by American Crafts. It's the Jane Davenport Mermaid Marker. And you can get them through a variety of places, including Michael's, which is where I got mine. You can also order them off the Michael's site. And I believe they're available on Amazon now um, for, I think, 20 something for a pack of 12. But you can check my description below for the actual results. Um, but like I said, I haven't really seen the refills for this. And what this is, is this is a really common brush pin body. Um, very popular with brush pins from China. In fact, the Sketchbox Signature uses the exact same body with a similar cap. So um, this is sort of playing off of these. These were, have been around for at least a decade, whereas these came out last year. So um, you could use these as watercolor markers with the same amount of success as you would be able to use these here, just different marker, different body. I just didn't want you guys to think that, you know, Pentel was copying Jane Davenport when it's really the other way around. And this was a set of 18. And again, you can check the description for links to get your own and for the actual price. This has had a chance to dry fully overnight. So I'm gonna zoom it zoom and we're gonna do the water test. And we're looking for a couple of things. We're looking to see how easily it activates with water. And we're also going to look for color chromatography. That means we're looking to see if the individual uh, components in the dye split out into separate colors. And we're just using a water brush full of what I thought was clean water. Unfortunately, there might be some pink in the water. And gray holds up surprisingly well. And these have had a chance to dry for 24 hours. If you want to blend them like watercolor, I would suggest you don't wait that long. I don't even know that I would wait. I would probably try to do it immediately. But these are also not marketed as watercolor. So really just 
testing this to be thorough and to see if we can discover some new properties. Turquoise is lovely blended out. And I am pushing a lot of water out as I go and then cleaning the brush between stripes or swipes. And doing this sort of testing has really been helpful in introducing me to new uses for products. I can even, if you guys would like, do a Copic marker swatch using a blender marker. All right, so uh, most of the colors move at least somewhat. Um, gray is surprisingly steady and hmm, that's about it. The other ones all move to an extent. Now I'm gonna grab a Prismacolor. Go ahead and get the brush in. And it seems like so far, there's not a whole lot of movement. Olive green moved a little bit, but I think that's because it had kind of built up on the paper. So if there's like a lot of like a deposit of this ink on your paper, it'll probably move. Now, if you want to use these with Copics, what I would suggest doing is I would suggest doing your Copic work first. You don't want to like ruin or stain your nibs. And usually when I do mixed media with watercolor and Copic marker, I do my Copic first. I think I do it first every time. Yeah, so no real movement. So they're not, uh, they're compatible with Copic in that they're not gonna move if you try to Copic on top of them, but they are not compatible with Copic if you are looking for cross color blendability. And both of them are dye based. I don't wanna say markers necessarily, Copics are markers, but the Pentels are brush pins. Um, so I am super excited to play around with these. I am looking forward to noodling with them during October. I am going to, here at the bottom of the page, see if we can do sort of a transitional blending effect. So I've got light green, green, turquoise, and steel blue. And we want to get a lot of paint on the paper. Do that very simply just by squeezing, squeezing the barrel. All right, so they seem to blend very nicely, which would make these great, I guess, for hand lettering. Um, and because they have that individual nylon bristle brush tips, somewhat similar to the Kuratake Clean Color Real Brush, they're less likely to damage your paper surface because they're not gonna abrade it. They're not gonna like rub until the surface pills. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully I'll have more videos where we play around with these, do some fun things. And I hope you'll keep an eye on this channel for that. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope to see you again really soon. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.